Cosmos 96 was a Russian probe to Venus that got stuck in its parking orbit. The rocket failed. It never got any further. So it fell back to Earth and burned up. Cosmos 96 was part of the USSR's Venera project, a 22-year study of the planet Venus. NORAD lacked the technology to determine exactly where the craft landed, a mystery that the agency says remains to this day. Oberg thinks the Kecksburg object could be Cosmos 96. To test his theory, he seeks out the Air Force tracking data from December 9th, 1965. The Air Force keeps very detailed historical records of satellites in space. Oberg believes they may be the key to solving the Kecksburg mystery. But when Oberg examines the data, he finds a key inconsistency between the Cosmos probe and what happened in Kecksburg. At the time of the Kecksburg sightings, the flight path of Cosmos 96 was nowhere near Pennsylvania. People around Kecksburg reported seeing the fireball in the early evening around 4.45 p.m., as much as 13 hours after the Cosmos 96 re-entry. While the probe was believed to have entered the atmosphere over central Canada, NORAD now thinks it could have been as far away as the Indian Ocean. Oberg maintains it is possible that the Air Force intentionally released misleading data on Cosmos 96. Perhaps if it was a satellite and it did come down, the Air Force released false tracking data to camouflage this fact. Oberg asserts that in the tense Cold War atmosphere, U.S. officials would have had every reason to keep such a find under wraps. But by the year 2000, when he has access to more accurate data, Oberg finally dismisses the Cosmos 96 theory. The coincidence of the satellite coming back to Earth the same day that this object was found in Pennsylvania, it was very tempting. Later on, better tracking data allowed us to see that this was not, in fact, a connection. It was a pure coincidence. Still, he maintains that other satellites can't be entirely ruled out. There are candidates from spacecraft, Russian, and our spacecraft. The 60s was a period of very intense aerospace activity. Lots of stuff in the air, lots of it falling out of the air, and a lot of that really, really secret. Stuff that took years to come out, if it ever did come out. It is possible, Oberg asserts, that a piece of a craft, often referred to as orbital debris, or space junk, survived entry into the Earth's atmosphere and landed near Kecksburg. People don't realize how much of the space junk that fell back to Earth survived. We have struts and, and beams and, and insulation fragments that have re-entered the atmosphere. Most satellite burns up. These pieces survive, hit the ground. And those pieces that did hit the ground were, would be of immense interest to military intelligence officers. Still, Oberg considers that an unlikely scenario. For Stan Gordon, the space junk theory still fails to fully explain what eyewitnesses reported and what he's come to believe. I'm convinced beyond any doubt that an object of unknown origin did fall from the sky and apparently the military came and recovered it. We've heard everything. One witness told me years ago that a Gemini capsule had been expelled in the area that night, even though no information on that has ever been found. One witness indicated that he had information that the object was a projectile fired from a giant gun from a railroad car in Canada. We have something unidentified, and the more we eliminate the possible options for it, the more mysterious it becomes, and the more intriguing the question becomes as to what it actually was. Leslie Kane is a journalist working with the Coalition for Freedom of Information, a group funded by the Sci-Fi Channel that has taken on the Kecksburg case. We have scientists down there that have actually been able to prove that there was something in those woods that came down. Still, in 1992, an amateur astronomer unearths long-forgotten evidence, which he believes settles the matter once and for all. We have evidence now, I think Kecksburg is a closed case.
In September of 1990, a nationally broadcast television program features a segment on the Kecksburg story. Robert Young, an amateur astronomer and lecturer at a Pennsylvania planetarium, becomes intrigued by the case. He delves into newspaper articles and re-examines eyewitness reports. He later publishes an article declaring that there's nothing unsolved about the Kecksburg case. The elements of this story that might suggest that there's something unusual happen, the armed troops, an armed convoy, the object itself, these stories only come from a very tiny handful of people. Young suspects that those early reports from the night of December 9th may have simply been blown out of proportion. Hoping to learn more, he tracks down Ed Myers, who was Kecksburg's fire chief in 1965. Ed Myers told me that uh, while there was a search and a lot of people were there, that nothing was recovered and there weren't large numbers of military people. Young collects 150 eyewitness accounts from newspapers and his own interviews. They indicate that the official explanation is the closest to the truth. That nothing fell to earth and there was no major military presence in Kecksburg that night. Myers also accounts for the blue lights seen in the woods. There were some high school kids who were running through the woods flashing a camera strobe which created blue flashing lights. Then, in early 1992, Young discovers an academic paper published in the August 1967 Journal of the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. Von Del Chamberlain is one of the two authors who suggests that the light seen over Kecksburg was a fireball meteor, a celestial occurrence notable for its intense brightness and visibility over a large distance. It was seen over several states. It was very well observed throughout lower Michigan and especially southwest Ontario over by Windsor. Chamberlain and his colleague were able to map out the trajectory of the fireball by using these two photos of the object's dust trail taken by photographers in Michigan. We were able to use these because the photos were taken from two different places. They had landscape features so that with the photographers we could go back to the place where the camera was. Eyewitnesses Bill Bullybush and Robert Blystone have maintained that the object seemed to make a controlled landing into the Kecksburg woods. Vondel Chamberlain says these accounts are likely an illusion that's easily explained. Typically, when a bright fireball occurs, people who are out on the periphery of its observation will believe they know where it came down because the fireball is still glowing, still bright in the sky when it goes to or even beyond the visible horizon. So it will look like it came down beyond the nearby buildings or trees. Chamberlain says if a meteor makes contact with the Earth's surface at all, it can be several hundred miles away from where eyewitnesses believe it came down. Chamberlain and Young conclude that the Kecksburg event was most likely a typical fireball meteor. But what of the descriptions of the object making a series of S-turns over Kecksburg? <laughs> 